Hi, good evening, everyone. Welcome to yet another lecture that forms part of Gyan Prava's ongoing series of lectures under the rubric Creative Processes. In the past decade, artists such as Atul Dodia, Giv Patel, and Dayanita Singh, amongst others, have brought their studios alive within our space, and it is an immense pleasure to have Sudhir Patwardhan amongst us today. Today, we will be privy to an artist's intimate engagement with his creations through the lens of his voracious and interiorized worldview, a primal engagement that is nonetheless nourished by cognizance of work, by the, of the rich, malleable context that the work of art assumes as it moves beyond the horizons of the studio. Today's richly illustrated talk will explore some of the different ways in which Patwardhan's paintings are conceived and the multiple impulses behind the making of his art an old memory, an everyday experience on the streets, a strong emotion, another work of art. Any of these can be the seeds of creation. From impulses to methods and strategies, these processes result in a plethora of artistic styles that none, nonetheless belong to one family, one artist's sobra. Sudhir Patwardhan is a painter whose work has been exhibited widely in India and abroad in the past 40 years. He is an occasional writer and lecturer on art, and also a curator who has focused on, on introducing new audiences to contemporary art. Ranjit Hoskote has published two books on his work, The Complicit Observer, 2004, and The Crafting of Reality, 2007. A monograph in Marathi by Padmakar Kukarni, Chitrakar Sudhir Patwardhan, was published in 2005. Patwardhan's works are in the permanent collection of the National Gallery of Modern Art, New Delhi, and Mumbai, Rupankar Museum, Bhopal, Kiran Nadar Museum of Art, New Delhi, the Peabody Essex Museum, Salem, USA, and other public collections. He lives and works in Thane, near Mumbai. Before we begin the lecture, I just want to brief you on the upcoming events here at Gyan Prava. On February 5th at 6.30 p.m., Professor Kenneth Robbins will conduct a seminar on Maharajas and the Vabs of Gujarat. On February 7th at 6.30 p.m., Gyan Prava has pleased to screen the film Louis Kahn's Tiger City by Sundaram Tagore. Dr. Yashaswini Chandra will present a two-day seminar series on Buddhist heritage at the crossroads of the Western Himalayas on February 8th and 9th at 6.30 p.m. From 20th to 23rd February at 6.30 p.m., Barbara Mittler and Sumati, Ramakrishna, Sum Sumati Ramaswamy will present a seminar series titled No Parallel, The Fatherly Bodies of Gandhi and Mao, an Interdisciplinary Dialogue. Gyan Prava introduces JPM Write, a new course oriented towards nonfiction writing in professional and academic contexts. A first of its kind in India, the course has been developed and will be taught by Gyan Prava's academic director, Rohit Goel, starting from March 2018, between 6.30 and 8.30 p.m. For more details on Gyan Prava's programs, do check our notice board and website. Thank you. It's a privilege uh, to be here in front of all of you, friends, artists. I thank uh, Rashmi and I thank Gyan Prava for having me this evening. Is it okay? Am I audible? <laughs> yeah, as uh, Sarvesh said, this is uh, part of the series of creative processes. And so what I'm going to do today is to try and speak about uh, different ways in which my own work uh, evolves is conceived, how it gets started. I think most artists have certain typical ways in which their work proceeds. They have certain set methods or strategies along with their work proceeds. Uh, every work, of course, is a surprise uh, because you cannot predict where it is going. Nevertheless, it is true that with each artist, there are certain limited finite number of ways in which he works. I have tried to think of the ways in which my own work uh, normally proceeds. And 
I have come up with five ways, five starting points, five sources in which this happens. Everyday experience for me is one of the most important, the most common. That is where most of my subjects come from. That is where most of my inspiration comes from. Memory, secondly, remembered things. Then ideas and thoughts, things that you have read, things that you have, that come from other sources, the way in which they get into your, the, the way in which they get into your work. Then there is, there are paintings about painting itself. So what you think about your work, what you think about art as such, and the way in which that gets reflected, or that gets into the, the paintings that are about painting. And lastly, what I've called gifts from the world. We'll say a little bit of that at the end of the talk. So everyday experience, starting with everyday experience, which is for me the most common. Faces, faces of people, which of course are the most easy and the most difficult things to do. There is a need. There is a need to paint other people's faces. There is a need to look at faces and to add to the millions of heads, portraits, things like that in the whole history of art. So everyday experience translates into just going on doing this day after day, whether it is in oil, whether it is in acrylic, whether it is in whether it's sculpture, whether it's drawing, whichever way, to respond to this multitude and these individuals that you encounter every day. So that is the most kind of common. This is an old painting called Nalla. In Thana, where we stay, I used to travel, I used to ride my scooter and go along a road, to the right of which was something like what you see at the bottom of the canvas, and to the left of which were these hills, which are near Kalwa. So every day I was riding the scooter, I used to see one thing on the right, go along a little ahead and then see something else on the left. At one particular point, the way in which everyday experience gets transferred into an image is that firstly, there is a kind of additive, a slowly additive feeling about everyday experience. You become comfortable. This is what you see every day. It may be a street. It may be the railway station. It may be a cafe. This is where you go. This is what you see every day. You become completely familiar, familiarized with that. So it almost becomes that you are as if not noticing things. You're noticing them sub subconsciously. But in fact, you are responding to them in a more organic way. It has become a kind of atmosphere in your mind, this every day that you live, the, the kind of environment in which you live. But it takes, some, it takes some slight disturbance, maybe, to click that into an image. And in this case, there is a moon, a three-quarter moon, seen during the day, a daytime sighting of the moon. And that happened to bring for me these two things into one image, what was on my right and what was on my left. All this was under that day, daytime moon. And along with this, this looking up to the moon was replicated in the structure, the RCC structure under construction, 
at the bottom of the painting. So I'm actually looking down towards the Nalla and the houses around the Nalla and whatever is beyond that. But the structure itself is something that I'm looking up towards. So this slight discomfort comes, came to me apart from uh, the way in which I was looking at the everyday, it came to me from another source. And that would have been a miniature like this, a Mughal miniature in which artists were trying to bridge or trying to bring together two different kinds of perspective schemes into one space. So there was the Indian perspective scheme, and then there was this imposition of the Western perspective, and artists were trying to accommodate these two things. There is slight discomfort in, in the way in which you read the space, but it is that particular discomfort itself which I found attractive and which is replicated just to view, sorry, just to view the earlier painting again in this. So this is this looking down, looking up is in a sense in the way in which it, the everyday experience of traveling, looking right, looking left, looking up, looking down, gets into a certain kind of structure with the help of my experience of uh, other art. On your left is a detail of my painting, Lower Paril. And as I used to pass when Sakshi Gallery was in Lower Paril, and one used to go there often and look at the surroundings. It was a time when the, the change had started, just started in a sense. So those, those mills had a sense of a kind of deadly silence around them and reminded me of, of course, D.K. Rico's work. So it was that element that I was replicating in, in the painting, in part of the painting of Lower Paril, where it's end of one era, beginning of another, and against that background, there is this, this kind of wave of people at the bottom, which implies a kind of continuing that a sense that life will go on in spite of this change happening. So this is the kind of the kind of evocation of other works, the kind of evocation of works that you have seen earlier that enters into the work that you are doing. Everyday experience is the primary kind of source. One is responding to everyday experience. But along with that, there are elements from other works that enter into the, into the structure of the work. Another old work, train. You walk onto the platform, you look left, you look right, deciding which bogey. This is the early 80s, so it's less crowded. But you look right, left, and you're trying to decide where to get in. This experience, which was a daily experience, at a certain point, connected with this. This is Le Fernand Leger's city. The kind of fragmented and the kind of movement, horizontal movement, a kind of uh, step ladder horizontal movement in the work, halted by vertical structure, halted, halted by vertical lines or vertical pillars. So when I was looking at the platform, 
And when I was res responding to this, at a certain point, I felt that I have felt this. I have felt this somewhere else. And I felt this in leisure. What I'm feeling now in front of the in, in front of the train, in front of people going and coming, spaces going inside, spaces moving to the side. I felt this in that painting. And that is what I want in my work. So the impulse to transform everyday experience into something that you have experienced as a strong emotion from art itself. So you're, you're trying 